Hey you, it's Lexi. Welcome to another video. Today's video is on Kalito Castle and the Belogradchik rocks. Now, I'm super excited to be making this video. I got back from Belogradchik yesterday and honestly, just wow, what an experience. I don't understand why that why when Bela Gracic was nominated to be a seventh world wonder I really I don't know why it wasn't it is such a magical mysterious place that has so much to offer and so much still to discover so Bela Gracic is a massive place of like these giant rocks that are just standing up in nature so these rocks experienced really harsh weather conditions from rain, snow, ice, crazy wind and today we have these amazing shapes just standing up on the horizon. So Belogradchik is a place that I have wanted to go to for more than a year now. I think I saw some pictures maybe on Instagram or maybe just in passing and I just I had to go there it just seemed like such a cool place and just nobody else seemed to know about it so after a year of waiting I finally went and I'm so glad that I did and I'm gonna share my experience with you here today so just as a note if you are going there with kids please do be careful it is not necessarily a place for um, people who are unfit. There are quite a lot of steep stairs to climb up as well as places where there is just rocks and then you can fall off. There is no barrier. So if you have small kids or you're a bit unsteady on your feet, please do be careful when you go to these places because it might not necessarily be the safest place for you. However, I'm not saying don't go because there is definitely still a lot to enjoy. This place is around 200 million years old and the fortress was actually built from the 3rd to 3rd century after Christ. As you can see, it's a bit busy here, which is a little bit unfortunate. But honestly, it's so, so cool. You can really, you can really imagine what it must have been like, you know, running around through these rocks and seeing <laughs> what life is about. And I really enjoy coming to places like that. It makes you feel really connected to places that other people maybe don't necessarily always go to. And also a little bit into history, which is really nice. Um, a question I have then that I've been wondering, and actually I posed it to Greg, who is chilling over there. Um, so this was a fortress, right? But there are no barracks or anywhere for um or like any remnants of buildings or so something where people might have stayed or slept which made me really wonder what kind of stuff was actually going on here but i also know that there's a vast underground tunnel system which unfortunately is closed off to the public but i wonder if maybe that was that was their main place where they stayed where they eight like maybe we're walking on top of a whole set of amazing interconnected tunnels and we're all just by the amazing rock features that you see I don't know where all to around so, yeah we also know from some stories that when the ottomans came here they took the sar of the place and his family into the underground tunnels and beheaded them and I believe there's a monument um, not just the Tsar but also some of his guards and some of the people who stood against the Ottomans at the time and I know that there's a monument around here somewhere to commemorate their heroism but as I said I wonder if maybe the nature is beautiful but what if the underground tunnel system is really genius and it's a shame that it's not been preserved for the public. Another piece of advice that I would give when going to Milagradchik is time. Timing is everything. So we went at 
uh, two different times during the day and I would definitely say going later in the day was much better. We tried to get there for um, 11 a.m. and by that time already the sun was already too high, the pictures weren't great, it was already starting to get really hot. There was also so many other people from tour buses who had come through. So it was just starting to feel really crowded and to be honest, not that great. So what do you do? We decided we would go and have lunch and then come back. So it turns out back again. <laughs> that lunch makes everything better. Lunch makes everybody happy. We decided to come back to the fortress and I'm so glad that we did because it's so much emptier. Like, oh, look at this. It's just not so cool. Like, where are we? Can you not just imagine running around in a place like this? back in the day and now coming back later in the day was just so much better we came back at around 3 30 and went around the castle again and oh, the pictures were so much better the lighting was so much better and at this time all the tour buses had left and we had the place almost completely to ourselves bar a few other people who were also just busy on their way and not really interested in following us and doing what we were doing. It's really just so, so spectacular, so magical. More people should come here. Yeah. Definitely during the later parts of the day. During the middle of the day, I don't know if you can tell, but I got a bit sunburnt. Oh well. When it was really busy though, we did go to places that were a little bit more difficult to access. We went through random holes in the rocks and we decided, because it's so busy at the top, that we would come through a hole in the wall. Are you coming? Muscular for that. Um, this is the other side. The view was definitely worth it. So if you have a good fitness level and you're able to fit through these places, definitely recommend. You can get a view that nobody has seen before, or at least a view that makes you feel like you are the only person who has ever seen it and who has ever been there. Another thing that I wanted to say is it's also not that expensive. There are three different prices, child or four different prices, where you go for adult, pensioners, kids and students. So be sure to bring some kind of documentation along, especially if you're a student, because you can get a cheaper price for the day. And then you can go and spend your money on souvenirs or just on lunch. So for lunch, there are three restaurants on TripAdvisor. However, I'm not sure if I would personally recommend going to any of the restaurants inside um, Belogradchik, but rather if you've taken your own means of transportation to get there, definitely travel around to the smaller little villages and towns around Belogradchik. You have Borovica, for example, which has got a cave which has got um, original cave drawings in it, I believe, which is also something that could be really exciting to see. And also it's good to get out and see what else is out there. Personally, we went to a place called Madonna Inn in Falkovets. And again, just another kind of experience, a very authentic Bulgarian experience and such a different experience to what we would have received had we gone to a touristic place to eat inside Belogradchik. Don't be afraid to go to the towns around Belogradchik. Don't be afraid to go exploring inside the fortress. Really, it's, it's an experience that is yours for the taking. Obviously, this place is really old, so please always treat it with respect. If you enjoyed the experience you had, 
make sure you leave these places in the same condition so that other people can have the same experience that you did. I hope you guys go check that a good I check out. I hope you make it to Bulgaria. It's really such a fantastic place. And yeah, if you like this video, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, whatever you want to do, and hit the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week.